Hi everyone, it's Joe here from DigiJDNS, back with another video. Um, we are really lucky today because we are in the house of Football Cards Net, or Mark as uh, we, we know him. And he's uh, actually letting us have a look around his collection, which is fantastic. And as you can see in the background, just from the two seconds background shot you're getting right now, he has one of the most amazing collections in the UK and in the world. Um, but what I've particularly found special about seeing Mark's collection today, we've been spending the morning looking through it, is the fact that not only does Mark just focus on the big cards that we all know, the Messi, Messi Mega Cracks or the Ronaldo football rookies, but also the vintage side of it. And what he's done and managed to capture beautifully is documenting the journey of both Barcelona as a football club through cards, but also cards in general and seeing how cards develop. So if I bring you over, I'd, I'd love to start this video by taking you through some of the amazing vintage cards that Mark's accumulated over the course of his collecting career, should I say. And this is where it all starts, really. So I, for one, don't know half these sets. I'm, as you know, I know a bit about vintage, but I don't know half of these sets. But I think it's really special. And what, what I'm really lucky to be able to show you is where it all began. We spend a lot of time now talking about rookies and chrome and prism. But it's cards like these which not only started the football card trend, but they also document the journey of football clubs and players. And uh, as you will probably know, one of the earliest legends of Barcelona is Paulino Alcantara. And you can see his career documented through these beautiful issues from Spain, a lot of which came in chocolate packets. Um, and I, what I want to spend this video showing you guys is not just Mark's collection in, in all its glory, but also the, the beautiful evolution of cards and vintage cards over the years to try and show some of you who might be less, in, less interested or be less knowledgeable of the vintage side of cards and why they're so important, not just to the hobby, but also to the sport. Um, and as, as the hobby grows and as we get more collectors looking to buy cards. It's this stuff, which is not only um, sort of fundamental to the origins of the hobby that we all love, but there's also artwork in and of itself. And it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. So as you can see here, this is Barcelona cards um, throughout the years. This is from the 1920s onwards. Um, so going all the way back 100 years now, um, documenting some of the most beautiful issues in Spain, some really rare issues like these. Um, and yeah. I think it's a pleasure to be able to show you some of this stuff. Um, and what I will do is actually overlay as well some shots of some of these specific cards into the video so you'll be able to see close-ups of specific cards and sets that I think are particularly important. Um, now, you should, obviously, you need to remember that this is not this is just one country in, in, the, in the many countries that uh, had sports cards issues. This is just Spain, but there's also beautiful issues in Italy, Argentina, England, uh, across across Europe. Um, and it's really important, in my opinion, to be able to showcase some of this stuff because as the hobby develops and as people become more expert in, in their fields, take a break to look at that amazing Alcantara there, um, you will um, inevitably gain more collectors into this, this sort of stuff. And this stuff is really important because it, it is basically the history of, of the hobby. Um, so, yeah, thank you to Mark for um, letting me look at his collection and also documenting this amazing album of cards from Barcelona and Spain. Uh, and yeah, I hope you all really enjoy the rest of the video where I'll be taking you through some more issues through the years of Spain, but also some of Mark's more impressive or expensive cards and some of the history of football albums as well, which is something that's probably not talked about enough in um, the hobby. So Mark, why do you collect vintage? And also, why do you collect sets? Because that's not something that a lot of people do in soccer. Yeah, well, it started when I was collecting Messi. Um, <laughs> sorry, Go sorry, sorry. I've got, I've got, got the giggles. I just sound like such a dick on video, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. I sound like such. No, a... no, you. That was perfect. No, I, I listen. I think of myself. You're way better than I. Am, like, I, I think of myself, and I'm like, I'm laughing at myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with Mark, the man himself, um, whose amazing collection is behind us. I showed you in the first part um, some of the albums and amazing vintage cards that Mark has. But you might be wondering why Mark collects um, sets and also vintage, because a lot of people in soccer only collect certain players or certain big cards. But Mark, why do you collect sets and also why do you collect vintage? What does that sort of mean to you? Why do you like it? Well, I collected sets um, to start with is um, sort of the Barcelona team um, yeah. with Messi. And I just went a little bit back and a little bit back and ended up going right to the 20s. Yeah. So it went from Messi um, to R9. And then before that, we had uh, Maradona and Cruyff, Kubala, and then Alcantara. Greats of the club. Yeah. yeah. So ended up um, sort of filling in 
the gap between the years. And yeah. Now sort of got an extensive collection of 1920 to 19, 2023. Yeah. And what I love about that as well is you can sort of see the history of the club through the cards as well. So you can you can look at all the different players they've had, all the different sets, and also see the history of the cards. And I think it's really great that you, you collect sets and uh, look at the vintage and not just focus on certain players because sometimes just focusing on maybe one set or one player doesn't give you an appreciation of um, the history of the club, in this case Barcelona, but also the history of the cards. So it's really great to see you collect these sets. And I think if the hobby is going to continue to grow and continue to prosper, then we do need more people like Mark who collect sets, who really appreciate players, not just certain players, but also the sets they come from, the uh, history of the clubs that they played for and things like that. And I think that's where the vintage space is so important. So thank you so much for showing us that, Mark. And um, uh, make sure to check out Dan's video where, where you get to see more of um, his incredible wall and all the different players on his wall as well. I've skipped forward ahead a decade or so, and we're now into the 70s. So some of these players, you might start to begin, begin recognizing the names off just because they're more famous, simply because they're less old. Obviously, uh, Johan Cruyff played uh, for Barcelona in the 70s. We'll get on to him shortly. Um, but you can also see, as I was mentioning in the sort of the previous segment, about the, the um, improvement of, of these of these cards and stickers. I mean, here's a photo image of Cruyff that uh, Mark's put in the album. It's absolutely cool. It's so cool. There's one, there's, one, there's one of him playing for the Barcelona. Um, and yeah, the, the, the imagery changes a bit. It becomes a bit more sophisticated because the printing and photo photography processes improve. Um, but they're e equally fantastic cards to look at. And um, uh, I really enjoy looking at them. For, even if you don't, I love it. Um, so yeah, we'll go into the, into the 1940s here. There's a beautiful Cruyff uh, portrait card. Um, and there, there's loads more to look at. Um, it's fantastic that we can. Nieskins there, one of the Dutch, a Dutch legend. Um, so many more to look at as well. A few more Cruyffs, an awesome sort of window looking sticker there. Uh, and then, yeah, all the way through. So it's absolutely fantastic. And it's great to see sort of the Alcantara into the Kubala, into the Cruyff and how those designs change. Not just the players, but also the designs and the evolution of um, the, the cards and stickers and also the, the important players in Barcelona's history and how they've been documented in cards and stickers that came from chocolate packets or um, paper packets or caramel packets or whatever. Um, so it's fantastic to look at. I will now show you the Maradona, um, who obviously played for Barcelona in the 80s. And then I'll move on to the more modern stuff and sort of relate that back to how that relates to some of the stuff I've been showing you before. <laughs> So we're now into the 80s, and I've actually skipped all the way forward to 1982, um, where I'm going to show you some beautiful Maradona issues. So as you can see here, Maradona's got some absolutely pe beautiful cards here. This is uh, Liga Este, I think. Um, so Maradona there, 1982-3. And then we move forward uh, as we approach the 90s. Um, some more beautiful issues. And what, what uh, another Maradona there, for example. Um, they're just fantastic to look at. And... One of the great things about, about Mark's collection is that he's not just a, in terms of Barcelona cards, he's not just focusing on just one player or just one set. He actually is collecting the lot. Um, and that's where, that is what collecting is about, really. Um, I know nowadays it's about having, um, you know, really the good players maybe graded. Um, but back in the day, and, and even now still for, for, for kids who collect cards, it's about completing a set. And that's what it was always about when they first started printing these, these things. And to see these these sets basically mostly complete or near complete um, is, is fantastic because that is, you know, when I was a child, I wasn't focused on just obtaining one player from each set that I particularly liked. I was focused on completing my Panini albums or my match tax sets or whatever it was. Um, and to see that sort of in the, in the vintage context is so cool to see. And equally, as I was just mentioning in the last segment, so does the, um, the style of the stickers change. These are pretty awesome. There's a Cruyff there. Um, these are the Liga 1991, so we're getting into sort of a more regular series of stickers now, the, the Liga set, which were released annually. Um, and obviously, Cruyff was manager at this point, I think. So, um, Ronald Koeman there. Um, so, just fantastic to see how the Alcantara I showed you earlier compares to, for example, that Richard Wichter there. So different, um, but equally important and awesome to look at. 
Um, so I'll moving moving now we're all the way back up to the to the more modern stuff, the stuff that you might recognise, and I'll talk about the importance of that stuff and how it relates to this as well. So this album of Marx is from the 1950s and 1960s. Um, you'll see in this album that the colours, the um, styles of text and card, the cards develop with time as you'd expect. You've got some beautiful um, early issues here. And obviously as time goes on, so does the calibre of player. So Alcantara was Barcelona's legend of the 20s and the 30s. But in the 50s and 60s, it's actually Kubala, which is pictured just here. Um, he was a Barcelona striker for many years, um, Hungarian, I believe. And a really, really, really good striker. And he's documented in these Barcelona cards that Mark's been collecting over the years. And the, the issues in the, some, some of the stars are fantastic. I mean, you look at these cigarette wraps here, um, just such fine paper, but beautiful to look at. Um, and one, one of the great things about, about um, vintage cards is you can see over time how uh, processes of printing, how styles changed and developed. And they document the history of these players as well who would otherwise be forgotten, really, um, which is so special. Some of these issues you might uh, recognize, a few of them are popular, popular amongst graders, this set, for example. Um, Kubala is just a picture there. But there are loads of issues through, throughout the, the 50s and 60s of, of these Spanish players, um, which I, I, it's a pleasure to show you. And thank you to Mark for letting me be here. And yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy looking through these. Uh, one thing that I find fantastic about vintage is the fact that what's special about vintage for me is, is being able to see that being able to understand that the the cards that we collect today, so the prisms, the chromes, the stuff that Panini released day to day, the the culture of the collecting comes back to stuff like this. So all the way back into into the early eighteen nineties and into the nineteen hundreds and throughout the the nineteenth or twentieth century, sorry, were um, stickers and cards are being produced by chocolate companies, cigarette manufacturers, biscuit makers, even petrol stations. Going a bit later, and it documents the journey of those and it's the culture they have today, which is sometimes a bit American driven, can, can, can come back to some of these beautiful European issues. I'll, I'll bring Dan's attention to the La Colonials, which is my favourite issue from the 20th century in Spain. Um, but not because of anything special, but just because of the design. The players are beautifully documented on the cards. You've got the beautiful branding below. And then also you've got the backs, which are fantastic. They document some of the players. Tell you about the set because you actually I mean, these ones came in caramel packets you to buy caramel packets and it's just a place to be able to look at this stuff um, and i really appreciate mark for letting me come here um, and enjoying obviously as we come into the 50s and 60s you can see the colors are different we've got uncut sheets there look at that album from spain campeones the stefano on the front with these beautiful green reds and pinks and purples some lovely commemorative stickers slash cards here uh commemorating the opening of the new camp and so much more and it's just an absolute pleasure to look at some of this stuff. I'm conscious that there are years and years and years that I'm sort of flying through here, but hopefully it gives you a sort of a flavour of of this of the, these sort of issues and why they're so fantastic to look at. And I hope you're enjoying looking at them as much as I am. So as promised in part one, um, I will now take you to part two, where we've got some fantastic albums. Um, Mark not only has the Grady collections and the vintage collections I showed you, but also loads of complete albums uh, from all the way back as early as the 50s and 60s up till modern sets in the Champions League that we get from Tops and Panini now. So I'll take you through a few of these beautiful albums inside and show you the rest of the collection. Um, and again, these all, this all comes back to what I was saying earlier about the importance of, of collectors in the hobby and how special some of these cards are because these albums are out of works of art and they're so beautiful. Um, so this is one of the German albums, I believe. Um, and it's got some cards which look like high nullers, but they're not, but they're very similar. Um, these cards are stuck into an album like so. Um, just beautiful photography and documenting, this, in this case, the history of German football. Some really important players. Um, and the condition is, is incredible for the age. I mean, these are approaching like 80 years old now, some of them 90 years old. Uh, this is a significant Pele here, that, um, which you definitely would have seen graded. You've also got Di, Di, uh, Di Stefano. Gento and uh, Suarez as well. Um, so some beautiful issues there. Taking you forward and out as well onto this album. This is an absolute stunner. This is the um, Bergman Bundesliga 1965-66, which, if you don't know, is home to some really important rookies. But it's really actually lovely to see not just the rookies themselves, but also the albums in which they're housed and how important they are. So we've got some. This is the Bergman set here, fully complete, all stuck into the album. Um, th that's Nuremberg. 
uh, loads of the teams in Germany at the time. Uh, but what I do want to show you is two of the most important, probably German rookies that you'll ever see as Hamburger, uh, Korn, Berlin, Schalke, and on to Bayern Munich or Bayern Munchen. You've got Gerd Müller there, or Gerhard Müller, his rookie from 65-66. Franz Beckenbauer's rookie from 65-66. That's one of the highest, most expensive cards in the highest grade. I think it sold for over $60,000. Um, but it's beautiful to see these in their home uh, albums. And this is all the way back from 65-66 in Germany. Uh, and the cool story that Mark was telling me about this is that he actually got this for free in a, a lot bundle. He bought it off a collector. The collector didn't really know what he had, just said, yeah, you can have this for free. Um, so pretty special story on that one. And finally, fast forward uh, probably about 50 years, and we're on to the Liga Este 2004-2005. Now, yeah, this is probably most well known, this album, for the Messi, um, as I've come to show you. But you've got some fantastic history documenting here. You've got Valverde there, manager of Athletic. Um, Atletico Madrid, got some seriously good players, Fernando Torres there, one of my early heroes growing up, Piol in Barcelona, and there's your man Messi. So not only are there graded copies of uh, Messi and Mark's collection, but he also has them in albums, and that's, honestly, I love that so much because it just goes to show that it's not all about the grade and the money, it's also about the, the value as a collector, um, and these are what, that's what's documented in these beautiful albums. Um, which are becoming older and older and also rarer and rarer by the day. Um, Mark will also want to show me some, some more fantastic stuff. He's got, um, well, new, numerous copies of the Liga 2004-2005. This one, for example, is in-house in a card album, but they're all unstuck. So you've got unstuck versions with a complete set. Um, there's David Beckham, for example. There'll be a Messi in here as well, I believe. Um, and all sorts of other, other, other beautiful stickers. Um, this is probably one of the lesser-known albums. It's not a a Premier League album or a La Liga album. This is the Super Barca set. So each year, Barcelona releases a set for just their club. Uh, and in this 2005-2006 edition, you've got some really important stickers of some of Messi's earlier stickers and most, most aesthetically pleasing. So not only have you got, you know, your Chavis, um, your Larsons, your uh, Decos, etc., but you've also got the Messi's here as well, which is a second-year sticker from a Barcelona album. And probably one of the most beautiful stickers that you'll see, uh, which is coming up shortly, is this one. Where Messi went to the Golden Boy 2005 Awards, and that's a picture of young Messi with the with the, uh, with the awards. Absolute beauty. Um, and what's pretty cool about this set as well, or, or in terms of Mark's collection, is he also has some sealed copies. Yeah, Two of those. No, there you go. Um, these are stamp, hand stamped on the back. Super Barca complete sets, and in, it's, this, this is the album. And the inside are loose stickers, which I don't think Mark will, will be opening anytime soon. But they're absolutely pieces of history as they are. And then I'll, um, I'll direct you towards Dan's video to look at the rest of uh, Mark's amazing collection, but you can see in the background how many albums he's got. He's got the World Cup albums over here, Champions League albums here. And the last thing I'll, I'll finish with are these fantastic football, um, Panini football albums all the way from England, so our home, our home country. You've got 78, which is the first one, 79, 80, all the way, all, all the way forwards till 85, 86, 87. And these are all complete and beautiful pieces of history which document the collecting culture and stickers in our country. Most of you watching this will probably be from the UK. You'll remember the Panini stickers and then the playground. But this is where it, this is where it began. The World Cup happens in these guys. And it's an, honestly a pleasure to see these, see these complete in Mark's collection. So I hope you enjoyed part two of that video. I'll probably wrap up the video there as well, um, showing Mark his collection. So a massive thank you to Mark for showing me his truly amazing collection. I really appreciate it. And I hope, I hope this video has shown you that um, there is more to stickers and more to collecting cards than just the big names and the big players and the big grades. It's all about these sets, these vintage cards, the special cards that have led to what we have today um, in, in our sports collecting world. Because without those, these form the, the backbone and the foundation, the history of what we all collect and love today. And we should all show some appreciation towards it, which Mark certainly does. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure to go check out Dan's video on his channel where he films more of Mark's collection than I've captured today. And in the meantime, have a good one. Cheers.